Well, it goes without saying this is such a tragic case. A mother of three dead. So many questions surrounding her death. Uh, the reporter on this case who's learned a lot about it. Aaron joining me now to answer some questions about what did you learn when you were investigating about the relationship between the mother and her then 19 year old daughter? Well, I think what she had been complaining for five years since her, the divorce with her husband was that her ex-husband, Lloyd Nyrider, had actually alienated the three girls away from her. Had And she had complained to the courts and filed all these court documents. And in fact, that is exactly what the DA now believes happened. Um, she was found dead in her home. At first, it was viewed undetermined. They couldn't decide whether it was a homicide or a suicide. The investigators then really focused on the idea that it may have been a homicide. And when they began focusing on her ex-husband and one of her daughters, they concluded that he had been able to manipulate one of their daughters into helping him kill her. Um, and they chalk it up to this concept of parental alienation, where a parent has such power over a child that he or she can manipulate the child into acting out against the other parent, and in this case, um, actually help murder her. You know, as a mother, you, you hear this parental alienation, and, and I wonder how common is that? Is that something that happens often? Well, maybe not to this extent, I'd, I would hope not, but right. um, it's far more common than we realize. The American Bar Association published a, a report a few years ago looking at 1,000 families that were involved in divorces that also involved child custody issues. And in 65% of those cases, the, the concept of parental alienation came up. Um, one or both parents complained that that was an issue in the divorce. So it's far more common than I think we realize. And I think that's a problem because I think judges just see it as a parent bad mouthing the other as opposed to what many psychologists say it is, which is real child abuse. Where is Lloyd now? Lloyd is in prison. He was, uh, he took a plea and he was uh, sentenced to life without parole. So he is never getting out. Um, but his daughter, daughter. Carrie, mm -hmm. was sentenced one to three years. And she, it's not quite clear when she'll get out, but she will get out much sooner, obviously. What's intrigued you perhaps the most in this case? What really sticks out in your mind? Well, I think this idea that a parent could brainwash a child to this extent. It's hard for me to believe, but I had a long discussion with the DA, and he compares it a lot to, you know, the parent who's actually doing the alienating. He compares that parent to a cult leader. Mm -hmm. um, and that seems to make a little more sense to me, but it's still very difficult to understand how a 19-year-old smart college student, you know, going to school in Rochester, not even living with her dad at the time, could be coerced, manipulated, convinced to help kill her mother. That really is intriguing to me. Um, but I will say the district attorney and the family of the victim all really believe that that is exactly what happened. All right. Thank you so much for your insight into this case. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, Leah.